Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's an exceptionally overcast day today. Very cold, well, not that cold, but we've had a little bit of a cold snap. And today I brought you back to Brooklyn's Museum, which I had, was last year, 2011, with Kieran O'Keefe. Yeah, so let's go and have a look, look around. Dunlop Max Tire Depot, 1921. 1921, you can see much through the camera. I've also booked onto the Concord Experience, um, which would be fun. Introductory exhibition, five minute film, entrance this way. I mean, here is the birth of British motorsport. I think the first Grand Prix in England was here. Um, yeah, where the great Grand Prix, where it all began. I mean, I'm not particularly into cars or anything, but some of the classics they've got here is incredible. The original Grand Prix. Pratt's Protection Shop, Perfection Shop. <laughs> When I was here in 2011, it's, I've been here before, before that, but it seemed so different. The layout seems new. Um, an aircraft museum as well. Go and have a look, look around. Love these old signs here. Douglas Motors Limited. Um, the fastest on earth racing legends of Brooklyn. I bought a bike two years ago and I still haven't used it. Humber, 1887. Humber, 1887. Look at that. Isn't that Nineteen twenty eight Bentley. Nineteen twenty eight Bentley. Nineteen twenty one Wolseley Ten Moth. This all reminds me when we did that paranormal investigation, we did two actually, about 12 years ago, at the White Waves Museum of Transport in Enfield. Absolutely fascinating. I think I remember, ah oh, yes I do remember this bit here. Do you remember this bit here? Yeah as you go through. <laughs> That's a red phone box. Obviously there's no uh, phone in there. There's no phone in there, of course. Barnes Wallace Stratosphere Chamber. I went to Barnes Wallace's um, grave recently. Um, over in uh, Effingham. Wow. Morning. Morning. Wow. 
that's impressive. Oh, it's fantastic equipment here. Old school. Wow. That's big. That is big. It's like being by the Saturn V rocket in um, Kennedy Space Center, although this is a little bit smaller. Yeah. Um, the story, the story here is it was built in Barrow and Furness. Mm -hmm. uh, it came down in 36 main parts, and because the, the winter had turned and the concrete wouldn't dry here, Plan B was put, to, uh, put together, and they built the stratosphere chamber there, and then launched it, which is where the bus museum yes. is today, up to and launched it down to where they where it was wow. finally come to rest. Uh, you can see on here, I don't know if you want to take a picture of that because that gives you an idea of how it actually works. I went to um, Barnes Wallace's grave actually, only oh, yes, back in the summer in Effingham. Yeah, yeah, beautiful grave, yeah, little gravestone. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that gives you a picture of there's the clubhouse behind us. Uh, this is uh, the insulation going on. As you can see, it's completely freestanding as well. It's an incredible thing. bit of engineering. Oh, it's a fantastic yeah. piece of engineering. Yeah, I have to say, not. Uh, right hand tube there and it's just you bend together so now the centre of the chamber has got air coming in in both directions right so it's the four ports on the outside takes the air into it turns it and then brings it through the middle of the chamber right you're sucking at one end and blowing at the other end so this end is sucking it's just recycling around the side of the chamber so the air blows in into here through the chamber and it just recycles itself around and that's obviously on the other side as well here you can right. see there, yeah. that was the original floor height. Above us is the tubes that run down the side that carry the air into the chamber, and that's the actual chamber itself, there it is. Wow. All the way through, you might like to just scan that, mm -hmm. actually. The subsonic wind tunnel, okay. And that's this one here? Well, that's it, that's part of it. Yeah. Otherwise we'll be <laughs> tucking underneath it. The air was stored when the McLaren exhibition is today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was, this is the control room next door with high-speed cameras, etc, etc, set in here. There it is here and here. Uh, the air was cleaned, no water, no, no water, no blob, no particles. It then was released back into the chamber, which of course was a vacuum. And the air came back at Mach 4, 3,000 miles an hour through the tunnel here. Wow. wow. For 40 3, seconds. miles an hour. 40 seconds. Blimey. Bouncing My bomb. ball is next door to it. Oh, that's... The Grand Slam Bomb. Oh, earthquake bomb, yeah. if you like. The biggest bomb dropped in Second World War. 20 tonnes. When you came in, yeah. it slides on its rails. There's the fan, one of the fan motors which is blowing the air towards us, into the door and then round. Mm -hmm. And of course there's the chamber itself. Quick look up. Thank you. Actually going into the chamber. This is fascinating. Now for your part, it's 40,000 cubic feet. 40,000 cubic feet. It's 15 metres long and 7.5 metres across. So it's 50 foot long and 25 feet across the diameter here. It's 40,000 feet. The control room. Oh, wow, look at this. Analog equipment is fantastic. I've worked so many overnight shifts lately that I'm not even sure what day it is. My ears are rough. Great. And as for the ammonia fumes, yeah, oh, the old guy can counter. Thank you. And back of the airlock chamber. Oh my goodness. Well, we're at the back of the airlock chamber. All these bombs, everything, all designed by Barnes Wallace. Incredible. down to minus 65 in this place doing testing all right okay uh, this actual engine was used on the film set for the Africa Queen it was for the well the company both got one for the thank wind, you very much that one exactly <laughs> that was for the wind machine 
Okay, that's pretty good. That's another film history. But what should be there is a Bristol Pegasus engine that's a basically powered the Mark 1, 1As, and 1C Wellingtons. Right. But that's up in the aircraft factory with the Wellington R Robert. I went into that. Um, oops, Excuse sorry. Me, Pardon me. Sorry. All right. Andy. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, John. So the Pegasus is a single row radial, nine cylinder, 28 litre. Uh, then the Mark II Wellingtons, the 400 built, had the Merlin engine. Oh, oh, 27 litre V12 with the Mark III Wellingtons. Went on to the, the Bristol Hercules engine there, 38.7 mm -hmm. litre, 14 cylinder twin row. Mark IVs, 220 were built. That's this one here. Went on to the Pratt & Whitney Double Wasp, 46 litre, 18 cylinder twin row. They built a Wasp Major in 1946, apparently the B50, which was an upgrade from the Super Fortress. Mm -hmm. That was a four row, 28 cylinder, 71 and a half litre. And the biggest piston engine for an aircraft ever built was the Lycoming XR 7755-3. That was 36 cylinder, four row, 127 litre, 5,000 horsepower. Well, that was fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Got my own personal little tour. And they didn't mind filming or anything. Um, oh, airplanes, airplanes. We're going to the Concorde Experience. Here it is, Concorde. Then we'll go under the aircraft, we'll talk about a couple of its major features, and then we'll go on board. As I'm sure you know, Concorde was an Anglo-French project, designed, built and operated in accordance with a treaty signed between the British and French governments in November of you on the world's only supersonic airliner as we prepare for departure from London's Heathrow. I'm joined here by Senior First Officer Neil Rendell and Senior Engineer Officer Ian Smith. Is this just this what the passengers want? Yes. Oh, that was fascinating. So I've actually been on Concorde, which is rather great. That's really interesting. Fly Concorde. Have a look. Yeah. That's interesting. Got a World War Two pillbox here, which I suppose makes sense during the war. I'm not going on any of the other planes. I mean, I've been on Concorde. Come on, you can't beat that, really, can you? <laughs> it's great. It's like the Gatwick Aviation Museum I went to recently. It was one of the previous videos. It's got a lot more con a collection of uh, planes, obviously. But yeah. Fascinating. So while we're here, we're going to have a look at the London Bus Museum. Look at 150 years worth of uh, public transport. Fantastic. I 
1875. Bus. Not that I get on buses, because I'm a driver. It's fast, fantastic, isn't it? Most of, most of the buses you can't get on, but some of them you can. Yeah, you can get on the modern ones, but not the old ones, which is fair enough. Yeah. Incredible. What a fantastic display. I mean, look. Showing on the buses, of course. <laughs> oh. Welcome on this bus. Oh, fantastic. A little bit after this, sort of reminds me of the 1970s going up to Kilburn to see my granddad in his old buses. Actually, I think it was a little bit before my time. Oh, he remembers all these. Fantastic. What around here? There's a viewing gallery up here. Yeah. Staff canteen. Creeping in there. <laughs> Aircraft factory entrance. Let's have a look. Wander around some of these lovely planes in the museum. This is a real skeleton, isn't it? The exhibition continues upstairs. Let's have a look. Yeah. Walker Harrier. Like the one we saw at the uh, Gatwick Aviation Museum. And there's a the floor. So I have a cockpit. This is a replica. That uh, replica of the first plane to fly across the English Channel in 1909. So there you go, a little walk around Brooklyn's museum and the bus uh, museum as well. So I did find out from the chat that so I was here in 2011. It did, does look a lot different. It's, it reopened in 2014 after a, a big up, uh, redevelopment. I think they were going to try and sell it off, but it was too expensive. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. And now I'm going to go and try and find a pub lunch somewhere. How does that sound? Well, 
Well, that was a lovely lunch in the White Hart. And uh, here we are at New Hall Lock. Opened in 1653, 1653. And all the boats down there, fantastic. The Way Navigation, as they call it. It's National Trust property. Brilliant. I've never been on a boat, um, only to film a little sequence for Ravenswood, um, which is my friends. So yeah, there we go. Lovely pub lunch. Lovely walk around Brooklyn's Museum. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, all that normal stuff we do. And we'll see you next time. Take care.